enjoying that drink that much? It's episode four! Welcome back, four! guys, to the Busy Bodies podcast. We're episode four. Yep. We got our second guest in the house. We got Lucas Quinn over here. Woo! Let's go. He looks like he can maybe do push-ups. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll push up, push up off later. <laughs> So I don't know how, how that'll go. Are you sure? Are you sure yeah. you're not ready for it? I don't know if I'm ready. Oh man. We can we can do yeah. the knee the knee ones the knee ones. I'm I'm pretty good at those. Wait, the knee ones? There's knee ones. Yeah. That's Hell more of yeah, the girl. Isn't that the girl push-ups? Oh, that's like when you're like okay. Quote, unquote, no no no. We, we yeah yeah. Hey hey, hey hey hey. It's 2024, hey. buddy. Yeah. Okay. Come on man. We call you're them my support <laughs> push-ups <laughs> now. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they're support push-ups because they're supported girl push-ups. I'm gonna have to restart this whole <laughs> intro now. <It's laughs> He's okay. like, it's "Oh, you mean them girl push-ups?" <laughs> <laughs> so, Lucas, we're so well, stoked uh, to have you here today. Thanks for having me. We're gonna yeah. get to know you. The audience is gonna get to know you, your successes. Uh, so, what okay, is it that cool. you do? Yeah, so I own a training facility in Westlake Village, which is about, I guess, forty-five minutes from here. Um, I, uh, I'm a strength and conditioning coach, where I'm a trainer. I don't really care, you know, what people call me, but I train athletes. Legit. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. Oh yeah. man! And like so athletes, you can train athletes. these guys, you know. Well, no, he <laughs> said he said <laughs> athletes. Hey, no. <laughs> he said athletes. You know what's real funny? Before I tune into that, so it was a funny thing. On episode one of the podcast, we tried to sing something into the mics, right? We did. And they're we both they're both in music. <laughs> okay. I'm not. So they tried to be like what? Brandon. Copy this. No, do it with us. And I couldn't do it. And I'm like, guys, you are. It, it is like asking someone who doesn't train to race an athlete. Yeah, you're exactly. asking me to sing with y'all. That's yeah. a great analogy, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, he... people don't know how fast athletes really are. Oh, Let me tell yeah. you, this guy pulls out analogies all the time. <laughs> this is this is He's our analogy king. <laughs> oh man. Well, okay. So first things first, I gotta ask, what made you want to get into this world? Like, what what made you what were you since like since a kid were you always like athletic played sports and you're like oh I want to I want to teach or or what kind of made you fall into it? Yeah, great question. So, you know, growing up, I obviously played sports right. and I played uh, college football and and uh, it was never one thing where I'm like, OK, I'm going to be a strength and conditioning coach. Right, it kind of right. was, you know, an evolution. But I always loved training and working mm -hmm. hard and because I was never obviously, you know, the most talented, the biggest, the fastest or whatever. So mm -hmm. I always had to work for, yeah. you know, the starting position or for playing time for whatever. You know, I, I I had to put in that work, and so I I loved it. I learned to enjoy the grind. So, yeah. you know, and then then that kind of just was a natural you know uh, evolution to me. Then helping other athletes, yeah. you know, that were maybe in that same position. So, um, I was playing college football, and uh, I actually started training kids. Uh, oh while no, I was kidding! Still playing. Okay, sick, yeah. sick. And then it just kind of you know one athlete. Became five, became ten, became fifty, became a hundred, and just kind of now six hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, have you always loved that sort yeah. of? Um, are you are you a are you a father? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So have you have you always from like a young uh, younger age have you loved kind of being that like leadership aspect that teaching aspect? Do you think or you know? Great question. I yeah. I, I would have always you know considered myself a leader on you know the teams that mm -hmm. I was on. Right. I was always team captain. I was team captain of my football team in college so right. yeah i would say so for yeah sure. that's a really powerful quality to have yeah. you know that doesn't just come easy or natural to anybody and and you do a lot of amazing things like you have how many kids three i have three kids, three oh, kids. No. Yeah. he like yeah. he runs his own business that has yeah. constant people in and out all the time like i've got to go and i literally okay jake when i tell you he thought he lost me like i was <laughs> on oh, I the pavement I, Bro, I like go outside and I'm like blanking out. Like you oh, really man. do train and like motivate people. And like I see Brandon, like Brandon, when he's with you and he comes home, he's a different person. And I think that that's a huge thing to like hold on to. It's like you're not just, you know, working out the body, but the mind and the soul and like really building a space, a safe space for students and people to come and develop character. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I appreciate that. I don't, I'm not in the business of, you know, squats and push ups and sprints. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. am, but. To me, it's about how can I change lives. Yeah. So yeah. To me, that's what it's really about. Yeah. How can I motivate people, you know, to to change their life and to reach their goal and working with athletes especially. Yeah. yeah. It's like they all have goals. I want to play Division One football. I want to play Division One basketball. Whatever the case is, how can I help them make that dream come true? So mm. that's what I feel like, you know, the business that I'm in, as opposed yeah. to, you know, and I will deadlift say, squats. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I will say too that it that that's very true. And 
thank you as well because I always tell everyone, bro, you want to train with the best trainer in LA? I got you. You just got to be willing to drive a little bit. Um, yeah. That's that, that's about it. But I will say that um, training with you um, has drastically changed my life. I never once thought, you know, I'm going to wake up at like 5, 6 a.m. to train. Right. Until I started training with Lucas. And then once I realized it, I was like, bro, this is a life hack. This now, is, I love the system. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, now, it is. I've got a question. Do you, do you believe... Uh, I mean, you're, you know, you're training these elite people or people that are on the cusp of becoming elite. And they, you know, do you believe that that mindset can be built in anyone or that some people just have that? It's like if someone can sing or something, they have that like um, that spark in them. Because I had buddies that were athletes, like, you know, went on to college and everything like that, like amazing. But it was in them. It would like, you know, for anything like and, and albeit they couldn't control it when in some aspects when it would come to like playing a board game or or doing anything. It's like once they were set on winning or they're setting and being the best that was ingrained in them. Do you think uh, especially from like your experience of training, do you think like you see that in people and you're like, that is a skill they have or that can be something that can be manifested in a person? You know, that's an interesting conversation. So if you're talking about physically, like obviously sure. there are genetic predispositions to people that are going to you know, run the 40 yards in 4.4 mm -hmm. seconds. That's very rare. But right. just, and even just that competitive fire that I think you're talking about. Yes. It yeah. is more innate, I think, in some than others. Like, yeah. you know, some some people, some athletes, they're just, they're, they don't have that competitive fire. And then they end up, you know, burning out or, you know, not continuing or quitting or whatever. But, you know, and some, some people, it is more innate. You just yeah. have that natural uh, innate, desire to lead and to be great and to to inspire other people mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it can be developed as well okay you know with the right you know mentoring and the right type of environment that you put you know even a young athlete in because I've seen just crazy transformations I bet. for for young athletes that have you know learned to be more competitive and learn to you know work hard because I think working hard is a skill yeah, yeah. you know yes yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. and okay so I always I, I love, especially people in your field, you know, I'm a big Andrew Huberman guy and, and all that. I, lo I love biohacking, Tim Ferriss's, all his, all his stuff on like biohacking and everything. Do you have, cause we we're talking about you change your life, waking up at five, 6 AM to, to start your day and everything. When did you feel like you perfected your routine? Yeah, like, when did you okay. feel like, oh, this is, this is it. Like I've got this locked in. Like, uh, and, and how has it changed for you and stuff, especially being a father now? Like, I'm sure, like, I, man, I think about, like, I, I recently, uh, became like a dad, a dog dad, uh, as of last year, You're like raising, way there, raising a puppy, <laughs> man, raising a puppy and everything. I thought I had it figured out. And I like, cause I was pretty serious about working out. Brandon knows I used to do like the 6 a.m.s and going and everything. And I had like a schedule and then, you know, uh, a puppy came into my life, which is completely different, obviously. But, uh, I'm just so curious, like, where does that start? How's it changed for you? Like, I find, I find this stuff fascinating. Also you're 26, right? We're 27. 27. You're you're yeah. old. Oh my god, man. He's young. He's, I am he's like, Okay, you officially hit idolization cuz I'm so, like oh, yeah. dude. No, like this is this is a yeah, huge fact like oh, how wow. like what Jake is saying and to know your age like this is important for people our age to understand that it is possible. So what are your tips? And my guy, are you just like straight Caucasian through and through or what's your skin routine or something yeah. cuz you're looking <laughs> great, buddy. No, I tell you that's like my, my biggest fear. You know, white people we wrinkle real quick. You know what I mean? We're like a prune left outside in the kitchen for more than two weeks. We're like, oh, I'm 27, and they're just like shriveled like SpongeBob in the movie. You look great, man. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm bouncing all over the place. Yeah. So yes, yes. yes. Uh, we just gave you like 80 questions at once. So we're ready for your answer. Maybe we'll start at like more routine. They go for there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So routine, right? Yeah. So you know, it is hard. Yeah. It doesn't get easier, but you right. really you know have to make that commitment, mm -hmm. and it ebbs and flows. I like to say, don't let perfect get in the way of good. Right. Mm -hmm. So not, you know, even every you say you're going to work out six days a week at five in the morning every day, mm -hmm. you know, three days a week might just be OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might right. be fine. Right. Or some some weeks it might be six. Some weeks you might be three. But the consistency is more important than, OK, I got to get up and have the most amazing workout I've ever had every day. Right. That's not realistic. Right. Yeah. So just I think the consistency over time is what is the most important. And it's hard. Right. Yeah. Life. You know, there are different you know, seasons of life, but I think just the consistency over time is the most important thing. Mm. Do, yeah. you, Powerful. do you have like a secret sauce thing? Like, uh, so like wake up early, uh, are you into, are you into like the, 
the ice baths, the sauna? Or do you have like a journaling process or meditation? Pro- are you into any of that in the morning? Do you okay, think it helps? Great question. Okay. So uh, I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible and, okay. and you know believe in prayer and mm-hmm. things like that. So that's obviously a part of you know a big part of my life. Totally. So But as far as you know, just a routine. I'm a minimalist when it comes to mm-hmm. a awesome. lot of other stuff. But because I think there's a lot of gimmicks out there. There's yeah. a lot of you know, stuff that doesn't have a lot of real science behind it, although placebo is real. Yes, yeah. So if you think something is working, it might just work. Yeah. Right. You know, things like cryotherapy or, you know, other things, you know, while mm-hmm. there may not be a lot of real science behind it, it could work. So yeah. there's that. I'm a big believer in um, hyperbaric chamber therapy. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Which I have a phone call with my my guy, Daniel Guzman, who is the former uh, head performance coach at LAFC. Wow. He and I are going to have a conversation about that and possibly getting one for my facility. But Whoa, that, okay. that might be a really cool and, and real science-backed yes. piece of, you know, uh, longevity. Um, there's a lot of great benefits to that. But in general, I, I'm, a, I'm a minimalist when it comes to all these different things. I think okay. just small, consistent wins every day mm-hmm. is more important than there is no magic formula or right. secret, you know, sauce or because there's not. Yeah. You know? yeah. I love that, man. I love Showing that. Showing up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. that, that, right. that reminds me of this thing I heard. Um, oh, gosh, I remember his name, but um, I, w- I, I wish I remember his name. But it reminds me of like, uh, would you say perfect, not g- or good, not perfect? Or yeah, how, don't how, let perfect get in the way of good. Don't let perfect yeah. get in the way of good. That reminds me of um, there's this amazing quote I was hearing that was basically like, uh, don't do two bad things in a row. Hmm. It's like, it's like, cause we get so scared of, uh, once we do have the routine and also there is this, uh, oh my gosh, um, routine exhaustion, which is why I wanted to ask you about it. I love that you yeah. have the minimalist approach and everything. Cause you know, sometimes I feel like people feel like, well, okay, the reason I'm not successful, or I don't have the body I want, or I don't, it's because my routine's terrible. I'm not waking up and journaling and ice bathing and then Wim Hof breathing. And then, you know, there's like yeah. all these things you got to do by like 7 a.m. If you haven't hit them, your day's a failure. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. You know what I mean? And it's too. like, and, and I have buddies that like do all of that, get get all the way through it and everything. But um, that's kind of been my philosophy a little bit. And I, and I love I love your quote is, is that kind of a thing of like, just don't do two bad things in a row. You know, if you mess up, if you go to the gym at eight instead of six or you miss a day just don't miss it tomorrow or just don't like right. yeah like I, I think i think that's such a great philosophy to live by i mean um i, I love that and and so when you say minimalist it, it, it's very much you just like go do the hard work and get the hard work done i was gonna say you know i like that approach but also at the same time you actually do have to work hard <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got to commit yeah. to something yeah. you really yeah. do yeah. I mean, so you've been training with me now since like yeah. May of last year. Yeah. No, end of August. End of August. That's end of right. August. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So, and you've made a lot of progress. It's just because you just keep showing up. Yeah. You keep doing the work. You've committed to it. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, you know, you got to really commit if you want to make those changes. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon hey, is I'm one of those people you, who commits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, oh, yeah. Bro, there are some days where we're, we're training and you can't even like stay up. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. Like, you, you actually will pass out. Jake, yeah. you should try one time. Man, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. But I actually love it though because. You know, I may need to take a second to like breathe or something, but it's like the what the way you feel during the day when you're finished, and then when you even see the results, mm. and not just the physical results. I think it's a it's at least for me, it's big on your mentality. Mm-hmm. Like naturally, yeah. I just start thinking differently. I start doing things differently. Like everything just gets heightened when you when you're consistent, especially to like physical activity like that. Right, I love that. In, so, in in that, like, how do you balance your family and work? Very, it's very hard. Yeah. But I have an amazing wife. Her name is Samantha, and, and we have three Woo-hoo. kids. So shout out Samantha. That's She's right. actually yeah. absolutely yes. amazing. Yes. Yes. She's a boss. Yeah, amazing. she is. So we have three kids, five, three, and nine months. Oh, whoa. So okay. I mean, look, it's hard. Yeah. It's crazy. But uh you just you just kind of ha- figure out a way to make it work. I mean, there's no yeah, you know, read this book, do this, this. Like you just kind of gotta figure it out. So it's, it's hard though. I mean, yeah. it's it's hard to manage that because you know, obviously we have our business that takes you know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week to yeah. try to maintain and, and the administrative side of things right. and just running the socials and like all that. It's a lot. And yeah. it, it is, is she, is she uh, a partner with you in the, in, in, in this business or is she like full-time mama bear and then doing her stuff as well? Or, or are you guys in the fitness world together? Or? So she's full-time with the kids at the, you know, at, at home, which I mean, is it's great. a full job. Full yeah. Job, but yeah, I mean, she, she works more than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 So no, it's it's a lot to manage, but she does a great job. Oh man, yeah. okay. So that, that's another whole so, conversation about who you pick as someone to spend life with. You know, like right, like aligning and bouncing out and working with each other. That's a blessing. Oh man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I so okay. I have 
sorry, I'm just bombarding. I guess that's what this is, is bombarding <laughs> questions. So, um, okay. He's interested. Was there was there ever a point uh, when you were, when you were, because you built the company from the ground up, right? That's right. So, uh, is there any experience in the family of like being an entrepreneur in this aspect or were you kind of the first to do it? And like, what were the trials you've got like trials and errors you've come in doing this industry? Like what have you, what has been surprisingly easy and what has been like surprisingly <laughs> devastatingly hard <laughs> or has it been kind of a straight or, you know, I'm, I've just been curious cause it's, it's its own thing. I mean, it's, it's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. So you know, my dad was a pastor, so okay, okay, he was right. not, uh, you know, in the business world or anything like that. So right. it didn't necessarily come from that background, but um, you know, the values that they, you know, my parents instilled into me, I think have obviously led to, right. you know, what I've been able to, you know, build, but, mm. uh, yeah, you know, kind of the history of it is I, I, I literally started training, uh, kids at, at a park mm -hmm. at a local park. Oh, wow. So what okay. I do is, is speed training. So speed training, teaching athletes how to, how to sprint, how to run, how to get faster and just overall building athleticism and strength training. And so, right. uh, it started with one, one athlete at the park and I actually did that every day for four years. I would, oh, wow. I would go to the park, actually develop, uh, I had a, I had a, I had a van and yeah. put shelving and all the equipment. It would take me an hour mm. to wow. set up every day and like an hour and a half to clean up every single day. Wow. Did that for four years. And that one athlete turned into, you know, a hundred athletes or yeah. more in those four years. And then, uh, and that was in, in Westlake, in wow. Westlake Village. And then one day I get a call from the city of Westlake saying, hey, we received a couple of complaints that you're at this park because <laughs> yeah. it was like a legit like business wow. training I mean, facility at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they said, Hey, uh, we're not going to allow you to do this here anymore. Oh, wow. So, but it was the same day in that same little park complex adjacent to that was this, is this business center and the, the, the business on the, on the end opened up. Mm. And Get so out. I put an offer in on that same day. Wow. They call it the exact Face. same day <laughs> yeah. to, yeah. to, you know, to start that. lease negotiation and things like that. So I ended up moving into a 3,000 square foot facility uh, just right near that same park. And then that was in 2019. Yeah. Dude, so that, that was is four and a half years ago. Crazy. Oh, 20. No way. So you established your business right before the coming of COVID. Literally like, three months before is my grand opening. No yeah. way, man. <laughs> yeah. So then, so how did you, I guess, there you go. There's a hard thing. No, no one saw coming. So how, like the park you would typically go outside to yeah. <laughs> it's like you say no you can't go and then you have an indoor establishment and that's all about, no you can't you can't yeah, yeah it's yeah. all about like breathing heavy and i mean you're teaching people how to run and 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 uh you know i'm my semantics behind it i have no idea how what how a lot of this works but it's like i'm assuming because of like masking and stuff like that that was an obstacle so what what did you do there like how, yeah that was weird <laughs> times for sure so you know march 2020 obviously yeah shut down the LA County had orders of all gyms and most businesses had to be shut down. So birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for three months, those first three months, it was March to June. Dude. I was just doing, we were just doing outside training. Yeah. You know, as, as well as we could. And a lot of parents were comfortable with, right. with us still training. Um, yeah. but so I was doing, you know, training in people's houses and things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in June of 2020, they allowed businesses to reopen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so then that's, that's what we did, but there were still strict, you know, policies in place. But uh, to be honest, for several months of those, because after that, then they started to shut things down again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. you know, there were, we, we actually shut the lights off, locked the door, people parked around the back and came in and people were like, we got to train. Yeah. We have to train. Yeah. Our, the kids, schools were shut down. Parents were like, look, please, can you open up for us to train? So that's what we did for a long time. Wow. For several months. And then things started to, to let loose. And, you know, I just didn't have any issues with COVID and no cases in there and all that. So it was, right. everything was fine. But that was a big obstacle for sure, but it just really showed me that, you know, the importance of of exercise, especially yeah. for kids. Yeah. Right? Oh man, so that was that was big. Fundamental, man. Right. And uh, and so because you, you got you got three kiddos, and so did you know? Like, uh, I mean, going in on this business was a was a uh, a risk in so many ways of like starting any businesses. Uh, did you always know that? this was going to eventually be to where this led or when you started, were you just starting from the, like, I love doing this. I love teaching people. Did you, did you expect it to be like opening a shop and over, you know, opening a place? I kind of had that goal in the back of my mind, but my, my, I think this is why I have, have done well in the little space that I'm in right. is, is because I've, I've always said my number one goal is to provide value. Mm. Yeah, How okay. can I provide value? Not, Oh, I want to open up some sort of big training facility with bills and whistles and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, 
that was kind of in the back of my head. I, that was my goal. But my number one priority is training the person in front of me. Right. How can I help change this person's life? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell somebody else and they'll tell somebody else. So it was never about who, what athlete can I go get to train or whatever. It was always like, can I impact the person in front of me? Yeah. And, and do everything I can to train them as, as good as I can. And then, then it'll grow organically from there. And that's exactly what mm -hmm. it did. Yeah. yeah. Is that, is that how um, <clears throat> you got to a position to where you found yourself working with a lot of high schools, colleges and training their entire team? Because I know there's like there's with some schools, I think you train the entire team. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 So how did that come about? Yeah. So I was a strength and conditioning coach at Cal Lutheran University for four years. Um, and so I kind of got that experience, uh, you know, training teams and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that is just kind of, you know, a part of a part of strength and conditioning and training athletes as teams. So I do train right. a lot of teams. But uh, that that just kind of started as uh, I had a great internship at CLU. I actually played football there and then. The strength coach brought me on and I trained football and men's basketball and baseball and women's soccer, just a lot of different sports. Yeah. So that was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I still do that now on the private side. But but really it was, you know, starting with the 11 year old in front of me. How mm -hmm. can I train this athlete in front of me? And now five years later, this past summer, you know, I had, you know, NFL players, second round draft picks, NBA players, defensive player of the year. So wow. it just, you know, kind of just grew naturally from there. But I never said Oh, I, all I want to do is train NBA players. Yeah. Or how right, do you get right. into that space? Mm -hmm. For me, it was, hey, train the person in front of me the best that I possibly can. And and opportunity. All that stuff is going to, all those opportunities are yeah. going to come later if you Every, do a good job right. and where your feet are planted now. Oh, I feel like that's 101 marketing, true. Like, because yeah. people want to be seen. Like, if you really, like, they want to be focused on they're there for a specific reason. And when you choose to, like, in conversation, even when you're valuing what each other is saying, yeah. you want to continue a conversation. So, like, in building community and family and like people who are have longevity with you and and that's i think that's beautiful it's that's what we should do in all business yeah. is like right who's in front of me yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's the what is the um at this point now since the business is growing and, and obviously you're working more and more with like bigger teams bigger clients and stuff what's the um you have like an application plan where like like i know a lot of people have like an app where it's like you know there's like a training app or or do you plan on opening more spots or what where's kind of like your mind right now for all of that yeah great question so you know every personal trainer wants to have their own facility right, right. i mean Definitely. literally right. every personal trainer wants to have their own it's really hard though yeah I mean, it's really hard to be one guy and have your own training facility to handle that overhead to have the space to you know to buy the equipment or lease yeah. the equipment because you know nice training equipment is really expensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know just to have a you know a moderate space you know especially out here <laughs> yeah. the rent's gonna be <laughs> oh, pretty high time. yeah the the equipment that you're gonna have to get is at least you know 50 to 100k just to open your doors right and, so it's it's expensive and hard to have your own spot as as one guy yeah, so yeah. uh my my plans for for scalability are hard because when you're a trainer you're one guy so you're trading your time for money mm -hmm. right so that's a hard obstacle or hard hurdle hurdle to overcome right so how can i figure out how to not just trade my time for money because you only have so much time right mm -hmm. you only have so many hours in the day or hours in the week until you get burned out yeah, yeah. there's a running joke in the strength coach industry that strength coaches don't have retirement parties yeah <laughs> because yeah. you're basically <laughs> training 40 hours a week that's that's like your limit right yeah yeah yeah. so for me in scalability because I, I love the business side of things and you know how can I generate more value or then generate more revenue and yeah you know and and and, and things like that so for me it was online oh. so especially with COVID um, a lot of people started to be more comfortable doing things online taking classes online or even workout classes right. online or on zoom or whatever yeah. Um, so in me and my niche is speed, right? So yeah. what I did was I created an online speed training program for athletes. Oh, so I filmed nice. it for like six months and, and put a lot into it. It's an 18 week long course. Every exercise is filmed and demonstrated and voiceover. It's a full program that you buy and have access to. And wow. it has over a hundred videos that, that I filmed at really high quality. So for wow. me, that is basically no overhead. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. as opposed to, Oh, and open up five locations and now I'm splitting myself between five different spots i don't see that as, as sustainable scalability yeah for me what i've thought of okay how can i how can i create a product online that i sell yeah that provides real value it's really good training right. but now it's very minimal overhead and has no limit oh man and so now i've sold one almost every state in the country wow but that's almost no over overhead it's just a little bit of online marketing and right. it's your upfront upfront cost and expense to create the program um, but then it lives forever. Yeah, you, you can update right. it, and you come up with you know next versions or updated plans. So that's I think my scalability. So I have wow. an online course called Speed Unleashed. Nice, um, nice. So it's for athletes, <laughs> yeah, go. to get faster. Yeah. 
I'm coming out with Agility Unleashed in a couple of months. So. Oh, snap. Whoa. So it's building yeah. different right. packages. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. You know, awesome. I hope I'm you when I grow up. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sitting <laughs> over when too. I think like 26. I look in the mirror. I'm like, that's a baby. I see like 27. I'm like, that's a man right there. <laughs> like, we were oh, actually man. talking about that on oh. our drive here. Me and Brian were like, wow. You know, Lucas really just doesn't seem his age. Dude. <laughs> like, in the greatest way, though. Yeah. 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 So well, it's, it's, always, it's always funny to me because like, Emphasizing what Kirsten was saying, you know, when when we were talking about you, I was like, that's true. I genuinely forget that Lucas is 26, 27. Yeah. And you, you're, well, you're, you're yeah, 27 and you have a great business. You have a great family. You have great people around you. And I feel like that's uh that's a blessing to have. And not many people get to have that. Yeah, no, so, it's a blessing. And, and to be yeah. able to build that by 27 is insane. It's not easy. Thank you. A lot of support yeah. around me. And, and obviously, you know, I believe that God has provided me with this, all these opportunities. So mm -hmm. I obviously, you know, want to give him all the glory for that. But no, it's been it's been yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. And you've stewarded wisely, you know. Yeah. So thank thing. you. So how was that uh feeling? So I know you guys don't know about this yet, but Lucas just got um a whole mural done on the wall of his gym. <gasps> what? And it basically is the story. It's a bunch of photos of the storyline of when he first got it and to how he built it to what it is now. Oh, that's oh, so amazing. Cool. Yeah. And, stuff, and then just all, other clients and family and stuff like that. It's amazing. You'll see it next time you're there. And if you get there, you'll be able to see it. But um, how did I, I know? Obviously, there is the, the, the stress or the tense of getting it basically on the same day of when you were being yeah. told not to work out on the park. But when you got it, and there's a photo when you hit ground of construction. Like, how how did you feel walking into that process? Like, mm -hmm. this is mine. I'm going to make this the best I can make it. Let's start now. Let's do it. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was surreal to, you know, have the grand opening. But all the details yeah. leading up to it, the, the, you know, the construction, the renovations that we did, and the lease mm -hmm. negotiations and getting the spot, and all that was just so much fun to me. Yeah. Because I loved all the details of getting everything ready and the floor plan and the blueprint and, like, all that stuff was really cool. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah the, the mural kind of just tells the story yeah. of the business, which I think is important for really any business or any person mm -hmm. to have a story yeah. mm -hmm. to, to be able to tell to people because you're more relatable yeah. too. That's kind of why I did it so that people who don't know me or don't know the environment can come in and kind of see the story and the evolution. And I think it just adds, you know, just a little nice touch to, yeah. to the environment and the culture that I've tried to build there. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. Dude, who doesn't love art? Do yeah, you, exactly. Speaking of like the culture, the gym culture is super wide and varied now, especially on social media and stuff. Are there any practices that drive you nuts that you feel like you see all CrossFit. the- CrossFit. Yeah, I mean, but really, <laughs> right really. Off the bat. Yeah, I was about to say, I was about to say, like, what are yeah. some popular practices that, you know, from someone that's obviously a professional in, in your industry and stuff that you see that, like, if you had the platform right now, like, or an opportunity to be like, guys, these things are not great. <laughs> like, what would you, what are some off the top of your head if you're scrolling, you see, you're just like, oh, my God, again, like, you know. You know, that's a great question. So, I, you know, I was kind of joking about CrossFit, but I think it depends on the goal of the okay. person or the athlete, right? I think there is a time and place for everything because sure. no one person has this, you know, there are a lot of different things that have their place, right? Bodybuilding has its place. Right. Uh, weightlifting has its place. Powerlifting, uh, CrossFit, right, you know, right. strongman training. There's a lot of different yeah. you know, training for athleticism. All those things are very different. Might have a lot of the, you know, similar movements or exercises, but you know, I think everything does have its place. You just yeah. have to understand as, you know, the athlete or the person or the coach, what do I take away? Right. right? So there's a lot that you can do. There's a lot of stuff on social media. There's a lot of drills or whatever. Yeah. What can I take away? I think that's the art of coaching or the art of like, you know, developing a good training program for an athlete or whatever it is. You know, there's so much information out there. What, what does this person actually need? And yeah. how can I develop a plan? to meet their goals. So yeah. for me, I'm in the athlete world. So, you know, I don't care about a lot of the CrossFit stuff or the bodybuilding or mm -hmm. the powerlifting. Like I, I care about movement quality and, and speed and, and injury prevention and things like that. So that's very different. Not saying that bodybuilding is bad or whatever, right. Right. but in right. my world, I have to figure out, okay, what's the best plan for the athlete based on their goals, their injury history, their age, their right. training history. So, you know, I, St there are things that are bad, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. So you know, obviously, bad technique is not 
yeah. optimal. But I think there's a time and place for most things. Yeah, which which is like around all the time. Like I, I feel like for years I had absolutely terrible technique, and I <laughs> I'm still like Jake, feel would like you I'm, like to show us? One oh of these god, no, 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 <laughs> no. Then my hip flexors will start getting oh, yeah, all crazy. I forgot again. at 26. Do, do you think? Yeah, yeah, man. Hey, man, it starts. I feel like I turned 26, and boom, my hip started hurting. I'm, I swear, my life. Do you do you think it's applicable? Um, athletic training do you think there's value in any even someone that doesn't want to be an athlete that there's value in trying to practice some of what you guys do or do you think it should be left to kind of like if this is what you're trying to do stay in that zone or you know great question i think again it comes down to context but i think everybody's an athlete right okay you know what i mean so uh but that's where i think kind of the whole functional training you know space has come about like mm -hmm. uh, mike boyle does a great job with that um and he he kind of has that whole functional training. He kind of, he didn't invent it, but brought it to the, the sports world. And there's a lot right. of other guys that are doing that. But that being said, as far as like certain things everybody should do, uh, I think everybody should move. Yeah. Movement is medicine. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of different ways that that can be defined as far as exercise selection or whatever right. exercise you're doing or plan that you're on. Um, you know, I think it varies depending on the person. It's context dependent, but movement for sure is medicine. Right. And uh, I think it's a good thing that fitness is all the rage because I think it just kind of raises the level of, you know, everyone's health and wellness. But uh, as far as like maybe one thing that I think everybody should do mm -hmm. or some form of it is sprinting. Sprinting, yes. really? Sprinting. Okay, that's my yes. least yeah. favorite thing. Uh, uh, what, for um, what are <laughs> hit me with the benefits? Like, like for is it? I mean, is it all around like just mental cardiovascular everything, or is there like specific you know the the central nervous system demands of sprinting are are far superior to any exercise you can do really in the okay. weight room or or whatever. So there's huh. a lot of benefits to it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll go sprint. Right, so what that what means is do. we got to get back on the field. Yeah, we got to run. Yeah. Gotta so sprint. man, yeah. so sprinting like, though is different than running. That's okay. Yeah. That's what I was just about to say. Quick, right? So, exactly, so yeah. sprints are so we're talking sprints like like how 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 much we talk in here. It's like the last. <laughs> It's probably my own fault. Last time I sprint, I feel like I ripped my ass. So I yeah, you gotta be careful, wow, right? Jake. Yeah. No, you gotta be careful because sprinting is, is a is a high intensity exercise. Yeah. So right. somebody who hasn't sprinted in ten years Me. may not be ready to do that. So you have to do a lot of prep and okay. mobility work, and maybe you start with sub maximal sprints and kind of build up your tolerance. Or hill sprints are a great way okay. to get started yeah. with you know maximal sprinting. But it depends on who it is, what your injury history is, or right. or you know what your goal is but to be able to sprint as long as you can like it like as 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 the older you get if you can still maintain your ability to sprint right. it's going to have a lot of a lot of benefits okay so yeah. do you uh cuz i mean your work your work life and what you love are so intertwined do you like What's your other outlets? Do you have any other hobbies that that you're like, okay, at least when I'm doing this, it's not completely zoned into fitness and and athleticism, or is it is that just straight zone, straight shot, like all you got time for? No, great question. Literally nothing. Not I mean, it's family, it's <laughs> yeah. church, and it's yeah, training. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Training. Oh man, hey, at least yeah. you got your foundations. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Yeah. So okay, was there so there's whenever you're growing up, was there something you thought like, oh maybe I dabble into this, but or. So funny, no, because it was sports. Uh, so yeah, was it was it. just it was yeah. just sports all the yeah. way through, man. Yeah, so I, is, and is there a is obviously you're, you're basically training every day. Yeah, so you have three kids, and I love when I see your stories. Your kids are literally yeah. he he has his kids at the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, awesome. It, it's amazing. When do you start bringing so, them in? Left they've already rights? started. Oh yeah, oh, even the nine <laughs> oh, yeah. month old. No, not the nine month old. <laughs> <laughs> the three year old, yes. Okay, so like you know, around two, three. Yeah, I mean, they, my daughter, uh, her name is Colette. She learned to walk in the facility. I mean, she was literally walking oh, around wow. a football team. I have it on video. The first time She's she walked, so it was funny. like walking around a football team, like in the yeah. gym. Oh, oh my so, gosh. So, like, they've been there, man. you know, since day one. So, no, but, and yeah. when, if you meet her, she is hilarious. Oh, man. She is awesome. Have yeah. you, would you ever uh, consider, or have you had in the past, because I know like different people can, can hire you, have you ever trained anybody for like film or TV, or have they like consulted to you? Or, or, yeah, you know, actually a few times. Um, no way. It's okay. usually just you know random people calling would, me, finding yeah, yeah. me online or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then you know they come in and say, "Here's my goal. Here's what I got. I got a you know a TV show. I got yeah. you know whatever you know in Australia or whatever." It yeah. Is. That's happened several times. Yeah. Yeah, because I was curious because um, I've had to do a few a few of um, action oriented projects in the past, and you're actually shocked because you don't think about it endurance wise, but if you're running in a scene, you're yeah. doing that multiple times. If you're having yeah. a fight scene, you're fighting 
multiple times. And you don't realize if you didn't train for that or they didn't have a program in mind, yeah. you realize you how out of shape yeah. you can be oh, yeah. doing oh, yeah. that. And I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking, I was like, oh, man, if I would have had someone like you when I was doing some of this stuff, I probably would have been so much more prepared because you, like, run that scene and the gaffer or someone's like, oh, we didn't have the lights set up. We're going to need him again. to do that. Like, like, yeah. They're like, you could just keep sprinting, right? You're like, yeah, totally. I can do whatever you need me to do. Then you get home and you're just crying, man. It's it's, it's like, like performing on stage, like singing for an hour or oh, 30 yeah. minutes. Like, you have to have breath work and, like, you're moving all over the stage, like, man. no matter what you're doing. Which you're I didn't doing. even, which I didn't even think about or I. I, I saw this uh, video of uh, Miley Cyrus like running on the treadmill and singing her entire album. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'd be so, screwed. I'd be, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so screwed. But it's, it's important. You know? Yeah, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I, I on that note, sorry yeah. to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. People should look up two guys that train that I know that. Okay. One of them I know, one of them I know just for Instagram. But okay. That train, you know, actresses and actors and high level athletes. My guy, Ryan Sorensen, look him up. He okay. does a great job. And Ben Bruno. Ah, so, see? Yeah. Ben so Bruno. if you guys look him up on Instagram, it's it's definitely a market for 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 training people, you know, especially actors or whoever, performers, yeah. to be in great shape. Oh, yeah. man. Sure. You know, I have, I have a question. We we kind of like to go back uh, to this uh, a few times, I feel like, with different guests and talking about it. Um, was there a point where you're just, where you were really kind of at your lowest with this and you're like, oh, I, I actually might have gotten in over my head. I don't know if this is going to work out how I thought like was there a point was it um when this is all happening that you're like oh I I think I'm bit off more than I could chew yeah you know I would say there's a lot of you know moments of quote-unquote stress that mm -hmm. you have to work through but mm, not not to the point where I was like no I, I think I'm in over my head because okay. I was you know had a great family and support system that I can bounce ideas off and get wisdom from but you know the same day that I got you know that call about that yeah. was, so our son was nine months old. They yeah. said, you can't train anymore. That was my full-time job. My wife yeah. didn't work. Yeah. So it's like, what do I do? And we had just bought our first house. Oh, so it's like, okay, wow. you got a mortgage. You have a nine-month-old son. It's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. But, you know, that would, I, I would say, was one of the harder times, you know? But, you, yeah. know, you know, the Lord provides and, and, and God had a plan, yeah. obviously. So uh, just, you know, relying on, on his plan, I think, has been the best thing. And then did, did you, that. did you, um, like figuring out how to do the the video package speed unleashed right so you said like like did you go to like youtube academy to start figuring out how to execute <laughs> something like that did you have just like because because it, it makes front. so much sense when you're saying it it's like yeah i'm gonna create a package you know no overhead and everything like that makes so much sense but someone with not a, like no background in and from my experience like no background in like the actual like degree of business and stuff like that to just know to approach something like that where did you go? What were your resources? Do you have a community of people that you work with that kind of help you discover this? Or where did that come from? Yeah, great question. I mean, it was just a random idea in my head that I thought I'm going to do this, <laughs> which I think, <laughs> and you know. did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Bye, folks. That was, that's my crazy, wife makes dude. fun of me all the time because it's like, oh, you yeah. just randomly thought you're going to do that. The next day, it's like it's already happening. But yeah. I, I do think there's like a thing like just do it. Yeah. Just figure it out on the way. Yeah. But why Nike has it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, wow. figure it out yeah. on the way. But shout out to my boy, Matt Linker, who's my videographer, who okay. um, is unbelievable. He, yeah. He's the one who helped me shoot the entire thing. We had multiple hours-long shoots. I mean, we shot wow. from, like, 3 p.m. to 5 a.m. nonstop one night. Just, yeah. Just shooting content, shooting content. And then and then having people that help you, because you got to figure out how to build a website, like right. how to take payments online, like all that stuff. That's what you know, I was think gonna about ask, how to set yeah. up your Google ads, right? Yeah. Like how to get the right keywords and how to put the right price point and like all that stuff. You just, for me, I've just, you know, relied on people that I know and trust. Hey, can I call you and ask you for some advice? Yeah. And you end up, you know, just using your network. So, you know, Matt Linker, he's he's the guy that does all my video. I just, he's done all my shoots for six years. Yeah. And then one of my brother-in-law's best friends, he's my photographer. He helped me build wow. a website. His name's Brandon Bibbins. Yeah. Flash Bibbs on Instagram. Look him up. He's okay. amazing. Um, but like, and you know, one of my clients' dads works for Google. So I wow. said, hey, can I call you and ask you about YouTube ads? Like, and how do you like, guys? Yeah, wow. Of and so he's like, let me connect you with, you know, our person who's going to help you set up your YouTube ads. Or let me, let me give you the number of my guy, Alex, who's going to help you, you know, set up your, your, you know, ad spend or whatever yeah you know it's like you just use your network to figure out how to do it you just gotta do it yeah you had no right. do it, right? you had no fear of failing you yeah. were yeah. using all your resources or because that that's probably my biggest thing i've tried to work on and it's funny because i'd say it's this last year into this year that's really finally it's like just realizing the resources and talented people you have around yeah. you because like when 
I had this case and I think it just came from like, not to get too serious here, but came from like being like a kid of divorce and stuff where I was kind of like, I didn't want to burden my parents or anything like that. I was like, I'm going to figure out everything. I'm going to figure this out. You know what I mean? And so when it came to my career, when it came to everything in my life, I'm like, no, I can figure it out. I can wear all the hats. And then I got to this point where I'm like, I've been dipping my toe in everything, trying to figure it out that I don't feel like I'm very, I'm moving forward in any of these as if I would just focus. And the minute I started leaving it to be like, oh, well, I mean, I could study this or I have a buddy that's absolutely amazing at it that I know would love to help. Maybe I should just reach out. And it's like that fear of, uh, for me, it was the fear of um, intruding or asking of someone. But then you you realize when you've surrounded yourself with an amazing community, it's like mm-hmm. I started to realize, and I'm sure from like listening to you talk that I work best when I'm around peers that I'm fascinated by and that I know are talented and that I know can can help make me better. You know, you know what I mean? And that's that's what I'm getting from you. It's like I just had this fear of falling on my face, which sounds like you're like, just do it. If you fall, you fall. Right. I mean, that's that's uh, I, I feel like that that's so valuable. And I, and I wish I could like ingrain that in other people. Because that's I mean, and uh, it's so cool here about like you like you talk about it so strongly. But that's a hard skill. Yeah. Like, have do you feel like you've always had that? Have you always just been kind of like, I'm going to go for it or. Did you know, that? I don't know, but that's such a good point. And people, I think, have such that fear of yeah, like, man. failure. But for me, it was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. If it doesn't just go well, okay, who cares? Ah, oh, see, it's like, yeah, I just I tried. You know, well, that's what I was gonna say too. It's also I I feel a lot of people have the fear of failure, and for some reason, a lot of people don't like to ask for help. Yeah, you know, in in all fear aspects, of it can be it can be in anything. <laughs> yeah, but in reality, I feel like people love to talk. Right. People love to be there for one another, and if they can help, they will help. Yeah. You know, and I I uh I feel like a lot of people should should start asking for help. I mean, I even made a switch in my life. I was similar to you too where I kind of like grew up and I'm like, you know, I don't need to ask for help on X, Y, and Z. I can figure you it know, out. I'll I'll figure yeah. it out. And if I do ask for help, you know, they're just not even going to want to help me. They're going to look at me in a weird way. Yeah. Like, Why can't I do this? Mm-hmm. And I really had to like surpass that boundary in my mind, uh-huh. and it took a long time to get over it, but it's it's a it's a blessing in disguise when you realize like it's okay to ask for help Mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised of the responses from if it's your network it's your friends Mm -hmm. you'd be be surprised how many people are actually willing to be there for you yeah yeah. and as they grow with you like i'm sure like you were saying you've worked with your buddy now for six years that was like shooting and filming and everything and uh, what's his name one more time to get matthew linker look him up matthew linker okay yeah there we go to, to get him out there and stuff because you guys have been working together so it's cool so he's helping you you get to see your buddy grow like i'm yeah. sure right, through right. that like through your guys's practices i'm sure he's starting to branch off into stuff he loves it's like i just i just find that find that so so cool and because i mean that is just such a skill and every person i know uh young older it's if there's one thing i always hear from them it's that it's repeated yeah. in its own way is sort of like well i talked to this buddy and then i reached out and you know, I asked if I could get some information. It's it's not waiting for someone to come and like give you it. It's going out and getting it. And I'm sure there's so much you know now you thought you would have never known. True. It's like about like like you were saying with like the Google ads and all this stuff. Like there's so many and then and then I'm sure like um putting that video uh, speed unleash and then soon agility unleash. Yes, yeah, yo, yeah. Hey. Like, yeah. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure. Ready for it. Hell yeah. I'm sure setting, setting all that up taught you skills you would have never thought of too. And it's like just putting yourself out there. Yeah. I mean, even being in front of a camera and talking. Oh, yeah. dude. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. very hard. That's, that's oh, it's very hard. Yeah. It's so putting hard. Putting yourself out there. And I mean, I think, and that's why it's so, it's, it's so valuable to have a team of people that you, that you love and care about that are, you're not scared to ask for help and uh, and that, that was another thing i was going to ask so do you have a team like when like i know you have a team that actually off, obviously helps you shoot this stuff but now that you're you know becoming more and more of, of a boss and this is a building do, and it's expanding company do you now have kind of like a group of people it's like okay guys we like huddle together and we f- figure a system out here like i'm sure uh, you can't stretch you can only stretch so far so do you have people under you now that has that understand your ways of training and stuff and are you building that roster and absolutely yeah and okay. that's super important because yeah. and also finding people that aren't just clones of yourself yes yeah. so because you know there are you can find people that are around you that compliment you mm. in in a certain way so they're not just going to be you know say everything the same way that Adding you are value. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly right? right so you know that that has been something that i've been trying to do uh, but also just having 
good people around you that you trust that you could ask their advice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's so huge. Yeah. It's really key. And you also have your own podcast, right? That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Even with the yeah. podcast, it was like yeah. an idea I had and it's like, okay, we'll just do it. So I started last December. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Me and my buddy, Jared Wilson, we, we co-host together. It's called All Things Speed and Strength. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And okay. we just, just did it. So we do it literally in our training facility, like in my training facility. And, you know, we bought cameras and tripods and mics and memory cards and hard drives and computers. And it's like, and, and all the podcast equipment, you just do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea how to do any of that. And our first, you know, I'll probably look back and look, be like, oh, how terrible were our first episodes. But like, you know, we just learn along the way. You got to be to bad to be good. Yeah. Like yeah. that's 100%. You just got to throw yourself in. It's so funny because I feel like we all fundamentally know that practice. Like yeah. I think yeah. we know the practice of like it's, it's repeated, you know, just dive in, just dive in. We're like, yeah. But we just stop right at the yeah. edge. You know what I mean? It's like I, I feel like. It's just the fear of uh, screwing up. Uh, it's like that fear, that fear of looking bad. But it's like every time you keep rehashing this, this idea. It's like yes, you just dive in. You just do it. Like I love that. You're like yeah. We just bought the gear and everything. Did we know how it was gonna work out? No. Like, but you just do it. You know what I mean? And and I, and I'm sure there'd be plenty of people that are listening and be like, oh yeah, that's easy to say. You just kind of dive in. But it's true, man. Everyone I, I idolize, all, all the people I'm constantly looking at for advice and stuff are people that are just doers. Mm -hmm. They're just straight doers. And I, and I, I uh, and again, I just see, I see it all over again. I'm a self-made person right in front of me. It's like just, just jumping in and, and right. there's so much to be learned from doing that. And, uh, and yeah, is, is there anything, um, cause I know we're gonna have to wrap up here in a bit. Is there anything uh, advice wise that you'd say, but besides just jumping in, if someone's wants to start a business or wants to start, are there like maybe one or two things you're like, ah, had I known that I would have probably done it different. Great question. Number one, as far as in my little, cause I only know about my little niche, right? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. But finding a mentor, I think is really important. It's so wow. cliche to say, but yeah. it's really important because mm -hmm. they, they've, someone who's been in your industry for 30 plus years who knows the ins and outs made all the mistakes that you made and and finding a mentor that you can have a great relationship with can can save you from a lot of headache and a lot of you know wasted money right. and wasted time so i think that is the most important thing really is finding a mentor but also like just kind of you just got to go for it mm -hmm. too right you know you're going to learn along the way like you're going to learn how to you know find a space and open up you know negotiate the lease terms or go find an attorney that's going to help you write whatever paperwork you need to get done or, you know, partnership with whoever, you know, it's like you just, sometimes you just got to make that call. Right. So when you bring on, you know, I know you do special guests as well. Um, what type of guests do you try to aim for? And basically like, how do you tackle, let's say like a uh, proper meal plan for what you were doing for your clients? Like, do you tackle nutrition on that type of level? Yeah. Great question. So as far as the, as the podcast, I, I just, you know, it's been a great networking for me mm. to meet coaches I never thought I would have the opportunity to meet. So we've had 18 episodes. We've had really, really dope guests right. of really top level guys that are willing to say, hey, yeah, I'll come to your podcast. And it just it help, that helps still develop relationships and then using those relationships to, you know, branch out and, and be able to provide my clients with more value or just right. the, even just doing those 18 episodes has allowed me to expand my network yeah. uh, online. And so that is something that I found is to be super helpful um, as far as like the guests that we've had on, because now you have a relationship with that person. They've, right. they've spent their time to come and, you know, do your podcast for an hour or drive to our place and do the, but now I know them now I have their, you know, I have their cell phone number. I'm able to reach out to them and they, it's just like, th that has been really cool yeah. as yeah. far as nutrition. So I, I don't make meal plans. That's not my area of expertise, but I've, I've found, found people that I can refer all my clients to that are great. So mm -hmm. I just had on a dope, our latest podcast was dope. Her name is Jessica Isaac. She was nutritionist for the LA Clippers, UCLA oh, men's wow. women's basketball. Okay. She's dope. So she's the one I refer my clients to. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are listening, go hit her up on Instagram. She has a great website. Uh, her name is Jessica Isaacs, but just had her on. So just finding people that that's not my area. Okay, let me refer out. Right. 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 So that that has been something that I do often. I think okay. that's really cool that's awesome. to know your expertise too and know where to share like your resources and your clientele. Yeah, because absolutely. That, that in general, it builds your wealth because you're not just saying, oh, this is mine and like holding it tightly. It's like, no, I actually care about you thriving, like each individual person as a collective, like moving on and care about the person next to you thriving. Yeah, I mean, that. well, that's the key, right? It's like the only way to grow in abundance is to give what you have and Facts. you receive yeah. more. Mm -hmm. It just keeps, yeah, man. 
Well, dude, yeah. well, uh, we're we're about hitting time. Luke, this has been amazing, no, yeah, man. Exactly. I am so I'm so fired up. I'm so happy for you and all your successes, man. You're a super sweet, down to earth guy, and I cannot believe you're basically my age. I'm gonna go reevaluate <laughs> a lot of. A lot of things. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I, I do want to yeah. say thank you for coming on. Yeah, man. I know, thank you um, so much. I know it's not a short drive, and we always make this joke that, you know, this is like unknown territory for you. Oh, yeah. 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 And I everyone, never go past Calabasas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We went yeah. way past Calabasas yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for all your the guidance and thank you for all the help that you put out for your people. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, sure. I feel like um, as a community and just people out there in LA, like, um, it's good to also have, you know, a fitness leader, um, yeah. of your bracket and your expertise. So I know you're saving a lot of lives. So thank you for doing that. Appreciate yeah. you guys for having me on. Yeah. Yes. And go check out all the things that Lucas is doing. Like, yes. this is Speed exactly. Unleashed, soon to be Agility yes. Unleashed. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. And, uh, and then if there's anything guys that, um, while you listen to this, that, you know, we may have not, um, um, asked, we may have not answered, please comment, let us know what you want to know. Let us know what you want to hear about. And yeah. You know, we will all get back to all of you guys and what you need. Yeah, yeah. And go find a mentor. Facts. Yeah. Get a mentor. Well, all right, busy babies. All right, guys, we're sticking with that. Episode four. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Love you. <laughs>